Hi, in this tutorial we're going to find out about laying out uh, our website using different basic tools as for layout in HTML and CSS, namely float, the clear property in CSS, and display. So I've got a wireframe here and I want to do a website for a festival and I want a few different sections. I'm going to have a header section and a footer section. I'm going to have some social media sections down on the left hand side and then I'm going to put and it's an opera festival I'm going to do, so there's going to be a main section in the middle and I'm going to have three main operas that I'm going to uh, display information about. So I want to lay out that using different divs and, like I said, the float property, the clear property and the display property. So going over to my HTML, um, I've just got the bare bones of a HTML page and my first job really is to start putting in each of those different sections. Now, I could easily use just normal divs but since HTML5 has come out, we've got these semantics elements as well in HTML. And they are essentially divs, but we have names on them instead for certain commonly used sections. So header, aside, nav, main. And it's a good idea to use those uh, because they give your code extra readability, but also it helps search engines rank your code a little bit better or rank your pages a little bit better because it can divide up the sections in appropriate ways for readers. So I've got a header section. Uh, I'm going to have an aside section, first of all. Um, I'm essentially going to have three different asides if I go back to my wireframe. So SoundCloud, Twitter and Facebook, all the social media are going to go in there at the side. I'm just going to put in one for the moment because I'm going to be using float to lay this out. So I want to float uh, an aside here for SoundCloud. Then going from left to right, I'm then going to have the main section that's going to be aligned at the top here. And then I move on to Twitter and Facebook. So um, laying those out, as I've described, I'm going to have an aside there. I'll have a main section. And again, these are all the um, HTML5 semantic elements. Um, and I'll also have two more asides. That's two and a third one. And finally, a footer. So that is the way that I'd lay them out to start off with. I could leave all of those different div sections on their own um, and uh, lay them out as they are, but I always find it's a good idea and it's common practice to put them in some enclosing uh, div container. And a div container, I'm going to put in uh, an ID of wrapper on it, which is a commonly used name for this type of div. And this wrapper div is something that encapsulates all of the different divs that I've described um, in one outside netting. And once I've got that wrapper div on it, I can control it in one group now that they're all encapsulated in it. To help me get my bearings, um, I'm going to put in some, some content in each of those. And to start off with, I might just put in a single word in each. And this will just allow me to kind of tell them apart and to actually see the divs without any styling of a height or any content in a div, divs are essentially invisible. So uh, I'll just finish this off. So those are my content inside the divs and I'm just gonna go over and refresh. And I see each of the div, different divs pop up here. At this stage, it's a good idea to put borders on each of those divs as well. Um, and so we'll be able to see them a little bit more clearly. So I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna add in a style like so and I've created that style sheet and to just put a border on each one of those divs. One of the disadvantages of using semantic uh, containers like this is uh, we have to put in long-winded uh, selectors in the style sheet. But no matter, I've got my border <clears throat> and let's go back to the browser and see that in action. And there it is. Now at this stage, it's a good idea to start laying things out and my first place to start is uh, the wrapper. At the moment it's spanning the whole width of the page. I'd like to just move that in a little bit and have just uh, gaps at the side, the left and right. So going back to my style sheet, uh, that's the first thing. So uh, I've got my div, my wrapper div ID'd as wrapper. Uh, I'll go in and just uh, identify wrapper and as a selector and I want to make a width of 80% of the screen. And I'll also put in a min width and a max width. 
So a min width, I will try it as 140. So 340 pixels, I meant. And uh, a max width, I will put it in as 1100 pixels. Uh, I'll also float it to the center, so that means I will go margin left, auto, and margin right, auto. There we go. I've got all of my inner sections, header, aside, the main, the footer, of all of them in a black border, and I've got the wrapper encapsulating them all, but I can't actually see the wrapper. And just while I'm developing it, I'm just going to put a slight color on the wrapper just so I can see where it is. So I will go back and uh, put in a background color. Uh, the first one there is fine. And there we go. So a slight background color there. Just to revisit my wireframe, this is the layout that I'm going for. So my three sides will be on the left hand side, my main will be over on the right, my header and my footer span 100% width. So it, I want to start getting those into shape. Um, and the first thing I'm going to do here is my three sides. So they're all labeled as sides. So with an aside selector, I can put a width of 33% um, on each of those. And you see they have shortened up there. Um, just to make sure that uh, I don't have any discrepancy between my width and sometimes the border can take an effect um, on increasing the width and also margins and padding inside as well. It's uh, a good property to try and avoid that is, is the uh, box sizing property. And we'll set that to border box. And again, that just means that the um, the borders or any padding inside won't increase the overall size of the container. That the container, if I say it's, the width is 33% of the container, uh, that they will stay at that. So that's the aside. Um, I will also float all of those asides left so that other things can flow in around them. And then for the main, I am going to take up the remainder of um, uh, the width. So if my asides were 33%, then I'll need to go 67% width. Uh, for my main. So 67%. Uh, I'll float that to the right. And that's easy to do when I've only got two columns of content. Um, a little bit trickier when I've got more than that. So I'm seeing my main is 33, my aside, uh, my main is 66 or 67, sorry, my sides are 33. Uh, my footer is floated up here and I'm not exactly getting exactly what I need. So some of the different things that I need to do here. One of the reasons that the main isn't flowing in there is again, I don't have my box sizing set. So again, I'll go in box sizing, border box. And it's a little bit of an improvement, but nothing much is happening there. And again, I'm not getting that rule working. There we go. So my main has flowed up there beside a side one. A side two and a side three, they're floating beside one another as well. I want to get uh, all these sides going down the side. So the left hand side. So what I can do is I can come along and I can use a clear property and say I want to just clear on the left so that I don't want to share any space on the left of the sides. I want that to be right up against the edge of the left hand side of the wrapper container. So those are the three sides. My main now is 33% or sorry 67% across the remainder of the uh, wrapper container. The last one here is footer. Footer is an oddity because I've set the float of my three sides and my main so any other content that's down beside it uh, it can flow up there on the side. Uh, beside these sides. To stop that from happening, I can move in here to my style sheet and put in a footer selector and I can say clear both. That I don't want anything to share the line with the footer. The footer takes over 100% of the width 
and that's that's it so i've got a good layout there that's starting to approach my layout that i did on my wire diagram my wireframe um but uh, what will really make this is when i start putting in content into it and that's what i'm about to do now back in my html i'll put in a h1 in the header and let's take a look at how that looks so i can see that my content is starting to shape out the different containers that were within and for my three asides i'm just going to grab some embed code from some of the different big social media platforms so soundcloud i'll start off with first of all then i'll have twitter then i'll have facebook and i will just drop those into their respective areas so where side one is written there side two and side three that's where my embed code will go so there is my soundcloud iframe and again uh, i can get those from any soundcloud plugin that i see where music is playing i can just take the embed section there and get code copy and paste it in here so let's have a look at that and that's what it looks like so we've got some nice music there yeah um and then next will be twitter looking for some twitter embed code which will go in here instead of that contact text uh, aside to and there goes my twitter embed code i'll save that go back and refresh so there are my tweets from the festival now uh, that twitter embed code is giving me a very very long twitter feed i may need to restrict that and i'll need to target just that individual div just that individual aside section um so i will need to id it uh, so going back into my html code aside this is a particular aside it has to do with twitter and so i'm iding it with a twitter um, value and i go back then to my style sheet and i can target that with the rule hashtag because it's an id and twitter is the name i chose for it that's the selector and then i can restrict the height to some value and there we go now it is actually still overflowing past that height so i can see the actual border of the twitter div or the twitter aside there in the background but uh, the twitter feed is actually overflowing past that so another property is needed there i need to use the overflow property and just say that we want a scroll to happen when there's an overflow rather than overflowing past the actual aside section and just rolling down the rest of the page now anytime there's an overflow the users can just scroll through the twitter feed like so so that's that and then lastly i'll put in a facebook twitter feed or a facebook um, embed code and the facebook embed code has gone in and just to see it in action then in the browser and there it is in the browser and moving on to a different section the footer section i just need to put in some code for that back in my html i'm just going to drop in some code now uh, i've just got content here and i've got a phone number i've got a, an address of the festival and some other piece of text a copyright statement or something like that i'm putting them each in a different element called a span element which is specifically to do with text and um, it's an inline element um, so i can move along then and just put in some styling on that and what i'm really looking for is affecting the font and i'm making each of those sections 33 percent and i am centering all the text in them and making them share the space so moving back to my browser let's see how that looks and so we get that footer section down there with the three pieces of text all spread out nice and evenly the layout of my website is starting to take shape and it's starting to resemble the wireframe that i had before i started um, now i need to just uh, fill out the main section and i've got three main operas in this festival and i'd like to show some information about each of them now i've just added in three different sections here for this opera festival um, and they're just semantic section tags and i've id'd them each id'd one as opera one second is opera two and the third is opera three so let's move back in and take a look at the content 
and we can see that they're all spreading out one after the other there. I've got an Instagram post beside one of them as well, and it just flows down the page. The main type of styling that I'm going to put on those three different uh, sections are, again, I'm going to use box sizing. I'm going to make the width 100% at the moment, putting in a little bit of padding and floating them. Um, that doesn't make a whole lot of difference, but it does allow me to actually change the layout if I want, rather than have them one stacked on top of the other. If I actually change it to 33%, because they're floating left, they should float around one another. And I should get a change of layout. So now I've got three columns for one for each of the different operas. Um, so that again is starting to resemble my wireframe and uh, I'm just going to take all of the borders off now. And that's just an introduction to laying out my site using again float, display and the clear properties. Um, and I can just start filling up all of those different sections with, uh, with content. Uh, just one thing before I leave it, I might add some padding in here to some of the different sections and I also might um, rejig the split between the actual social media pane on the left and uh, the main content on the right. Um, so let me just do those quickly. Going back into my style sheet, uh, wherever it is, here we go. So I'm going to take that down a little bit, maybe set it to 27% because I've got box sizing border box set on on both my operas and my, um, that's the wrong place, it's about 33% on the aside I'm going to do. So because I've got my border box uh, value set on box sizing, that means that I can play with whole numbers here in terms of things that add up to 100%. So I can set my aside to 27%, that should adapt and then I should just make up the remainder with my um, with my main. So my asides have now gone to 27%. My main spread across those three operas is now at 73%. And I'm just going to add in some padding to some of those because they're starting to conflict with one another. So I move back in and my three operas just add in a little bit of padding, uh, 5% or 5 pixels rather. Again, because I've got box sizing border box on, it's not going to affect uh, the overall size of those boxes, but just add some padding in there. And then I'll also put in a little bit of padding on the sides. And I might just focus in on padding right. Uh, while I'm here as well, I noticed that the actual social media sections are quite stacked closely one on top of the other. So it might be a good idea to have a little bit of space here underneath each of them. So again, on those sides, I'm going to come along and I'm going to say margin, bottom, put in 10 pixels. And I see a bit of a gap there. It just makes them easier to differentiate between them. Okay. Um, so that's all I want to do in this in this tutorial. And again, it's just about an introduction of starting to lay out my different sections, making them flexible enough also that uh, they're slightly responsive if I resize the actual screen. So that there's a little bit of give and take there. Things resize um, and have a little bit of flexibility. So thanks for watching. And in later videos, I'll go into some more sophisticated layout tools that are built in in CSS now, uh, namely Grid and Flexbox. Uh, they open up a lot more possibilities and make things a little bit more controllable for web designers going forward.